Okay, so this is a quick video using the, the light board that we have set up in the teaching center just to recap some of the things that we've done for our Math 2090 course on the Egyptian arithmetic symbol, system. So I've written down five of the, the seven symbols. We mentioned that there's two more. There's one for 100,000, there's one for a million. Um, 100,000 is a tadpole or a frog. Um, for a million, it's a, it's a god with his arms raised up in the air. Um, We'll probably, I think, stick with 1, 10, and 100 because these are the ones that I can draw without too much effort. Um, 1,000 is a, uh, a lotus flower. 10,000 is a bent finger. Um, these, by the way, one is just a staff or a stroke. This is um, called a cattle hobble, I think. It's some, something that was used to make it hard for a cow to walk, um, although I've heard other people say it's a heel bone. Um, 100 is supposed to be a coil of rope. So in class, we went over some of the basics, like how to represent numbers in this system, right? And some things are, are pretty simple and pretty basic. So we can, you know, the way they, they write down their numbers is just by counting up the number of each symbol. So just as an example, if you saw something like, like this, uh, let's say, something like that, then how do you know what that number is in our system? Well, you just count everything up. You say, well, there's, there are six ones, all right, so six of those. Uh, there are four tens, and there are two hundreds, so that's the number 246, right? Um, and so we mentioned that adding and subtracting are pretty straightforward in this system because if you want to add two numbers that are represented in this way, you just add up the number of each type of symbol. Um, if you have, say, if you add up more than 10 staffs, then you're going to, of course, group 10 of them together to get a, uh, to get a cattle hobble and so on, right? So you do a little bit of grouping, but you know, this is the same thing as when you carry a 1 when you're doing addition in our system, right? So it's the same idea. Um, subtraction works similarly. So I wanted to talk a little bit in this video about how multiplication works. We're going to do some hands-on in class, and we'll talk a little bit about fractions. Um, by the way, there's one other thing. Um, I was, did a bit of looking around, and it turns out that they did have, um, there was a zero. So some people will tell you that there's no zero in the Egyptian number system because, um, well, certainly they didn't need it to write down a number, right? Because you don't need a zero as a placeholder like we do. Um, but there was a zero that came up in accounting documents, it turns out, and it, it looked something like this. Um, and oddly enough, what this was supposed to represent um, is a, a heart and a trachea. Um, Apparently. Anyway, that's what, that's what it's supposed to be. Heart plus trachea. Um, so this would show up in accounting books. I guess if you're, if you're reconciling, you know, your accounts, your sums, you want to make sure that, you know, your, your things balance out to zero. So yeah, they did have a symbol for that to say that, oh, you have a zero balance. Um, so that there, there was a symbol for zero. It just wasn't necessarily used in their arithmetic. Um, so how does, um, how does multiplying work? Uh, we're just going to work through an example. So multiplication. Multiplication follows what's called the, um, it's sometimes called Russian, this is the Russian peasant method. And the way this works, and the reason why, why this is sort of a, it's a useful multiplication system for people that don't have any sort of sophisticated techniques, um, all you need to know is how to multiply and divide by two. And in fact, one of the things that they found when they went through and, you know, look on the Rhine papyrus and all the, these documents, historical documents they found for the Egyptian arithmetic system, is they, they found that one of the things you could find listed were, were all the powers of two, so two four, eight, you know, 16, 32, 64, and so on. So, so the, you know, the Egyptian system was base 10, it was decimal, but they still, they had some knowledge of, of the, you know, powers of two and, and some notion of binary numbers as well. Um, details aren't um, super clear for this, but if you do a bit of searching online, you can find a number of documents. There's a lot of information online. There's also a lot of misinformation because 
uh, I think this is sort of, you know, you're trying to read these, these ancient documents out of context and try to discern the meaning and, and a lot of people tend to get it wrong. Um, but how does this Russian peasant method work? Uh, I'm just going to do an example to, to show you how this would go. So let's say I want to do something like, um, I don't know, let's say I want to do 31 times, uh, let's say 53, okay? Now, we know how we would do this, you know, the way, the way you learn to do this, or the way I learned to do it in elementary school, um, and we'll talk a little bit about this as well, maybe in class. You know, there, there was this, uh, you know, standard method for doing it, where you would write down your numbers, say 53, 31, right? And, and you'd start with the 1, and you'd do 1 times 53, so 1 times 53, and you'd write that down, okay? And then you would move over and you would get to the 3, and you'd say, okay, now I'm going to do 3 times 53. Um, but you would shift that over 1, because really what you're doing is not 3 times 53, you're really doing 30 times 53, right? So when you do that, you're going to go, so 3 times 3 gives you 9, 3 times 5 is 15, so 159, right? Um, what we don't really write is that, you know, really what this is, is, is 1,590, because you're really multiplying by 30, not just 1. And, and then you add them up. So 3, that's 14, we carry the 1. So 1643, that's the number. Um, so that's the number we should expect to get using this, uh, this Egyptian method, this Russian peasant method. So the way it works is, is like so. You start by taking the number on the left and halving it. So you keep dividing by half. So we start with 31. You divide by half. If there's a remainder, you throw it away. So half of 31 is 15 with a remainder of 1, and you ignore the remainder. Uh, Half of 15 is 7, right, um, with a remainder of 1. Half of 7 is going to be uh, 3 with a remainder of 1, and then 1. So you kind of go down like this, okay? Um, we'll do one more example, I think. Um, and now what you do is for each halving that you did on one side, you do a doubling on the other side, okay? So I take 53 here, and I just write it down, and then I double it, so 106. I double it again, 212. I double it again, 424. I double it one more time, 848. And then I add up the results. Okay. So it's a lot more adding than we did in the, you know, this kind of base 10 algorithm that, that we all learned. Um, but same idea, right? Um, and again, if we were doing this in the Egyptian system, this adding would be maybe a little bit more straightforward because all we're doing is counting up the symbols. Um, but we're going to use our, our notation. So let's see. So we have 8, that's 12, that's 14, 20, 23, carry the 2, 2 plus 5 is 7, 8, 10, 14, carry the 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 2 is 4, plus 4 is 8, plus 8 is 16. Ah, and you get the same result, yeah? So this works. Uh, now there's one catch. This happens to be an example where every time I divided by 2, the result was odd. Um, there's, there's, there's an additional complication that you have to deal with if you divide by 2 and the result is even. Um, in fact, let me, go, let me go just one bigger. Let's do one more example. Let's say I did um, 33 times 53. Okay, So I'm going to do 33. I want to multiply by 53. So now when I half, I get, uh, I get 16 right, with a remainder of 1. But now they're all even, all the way down, 8. Four, two, one. Okay. On the other side, I do the same doubling, and we have those here, so we can just copy them. One o oh, six, two, twelve, four, twenty-four, eight, 
848. Oh, and I need to double one more time, right? So if I double 848, um, I get 16 and 96. Um, now, these are fairly extreme examples. Usually when you do this, you land somewhere in between that some of these numbers are going to be even, some of them are going to be odd. Uh, but there's a rule that shows up in this system, which is that you throw away all the lines where the number was even. So we cross those out. There are two odd numbers left over, uh, the 33 and the 1. And you only add up the numbers on the right-hand column that come from a row where there's an odd number on the left. And so all we have to actually do is 1696, and we add 53, we get 9, 4, 7, 1. So you get 1749 for the, for the product. Okay. So this is this Egyptian or Russian peasant system. This is a, a multiplication method that shows up uh, in a number of places. And we'll, we'll play around with some examples. We'll, we'll see why it works. And we're going to talk about why um, this actually is valid, right? We're not going to just do some examples and check that, oh, yeah, the answer matches with what we had before. We're going to try to understand exactly why this works. And it turns out, and let me kind of, I'll, I'll give you the answer, and then we'll, we'll explain this later on. Um, this works. because we can write any number in what's called binary form, base 2, right? So the same sort of number system that we use in computers turns out to be the number system that is underlying this Russian peasant method, and we'll, we'll talk about that in class. Um, the other thing we'll do if we have time is we'll talk a little bit about Egyptian fractions. Um, this video is already getting a little long, so I'm not going to put that in. Um, but let me just add a little note here, a little preview in case this comes up. Um, Egyptians only knew how to do unit fractions. They knew how to do reciprocals. And they had a symbol, which was this sort of open mouth. Right? This was their symbol for a part. Um, and you would write something like this. So you just put the number underneath the, the mouth, and, and this would represent 1 over whatever that number was. So this would be the same thing as a half. right? Or if I did something like that, that would be... 1 over, over 21. Um, they had a couple of special fractions, like uh, I think 2 thirds and 3 quarters. They actually had notation for these. But almost all the fractions were written as these reciprocals. Um, and it turns out that you can take any fraction that we use, uh, and you can write it as a sum of reciprocals. We might do a couple of examples of that. There's something called a, a greedy algorithm. Um, that lets you rewrite any fraction, at least any fraction that's less than one, um, as a sum of reciprocals. And we'll, uh, we'll look at that as well in class. Uh, okay, so um, feel free to try a few examples uh, on your own with this Rus Russian peasant method. Um, convince yourself that it works. And we'll do some more in class on Friday. <laughs>